Ian Chalmers is the Managing Director of Alkane Resources Limited, and Ian, you're joining us via Skype from, uh, from very early in the morning Australia time. Thank you for joining me in the Investor Intel studio. Yes, well, good morning and good evening, Fred, depending on which perspective you have, but uh, yes, it is still a bit dark here. Thank you. You've just recently put out some news of a, of a deal on zirconium marketing with uh, Mincham in the UK. Uh, the market responded very enthusiastically. Um, let's talk about the DZP project, the, the uh, Dubo Zirconia project, and uh, how much zirconium you intend to produce there. Sure, for, uh, yeah, you're right. It was, it was a pleasing response because we actually put out a couple of quite decent announcements in the previous six months and, and got nil market response. So for zirconium, it was great. Um, we produce about 16,000 tonnes a year of zirconia, uh, which really means zirconium oxide and zirconium chemicals, and it's the bulk of the volume of the, of the project so that we will produce. In terms of revenue, though, it's about 30%, so important, uh, but not the dominant output. The, the market gets excited about rare earth elements outside of China, and you've got in this project both heavy rare earth elements and light rare earth elements. What will you be producing? Um, we can ex produce all the rare earths, so right the full spectrum through to the lanthanum, through to lutetium and yttrium. So yes, uh, it's important, but in terms of revenue, uh, again, the, the key ones are the magnet materials like neodymium, praseodymium, uh, dysprosium and terbium, and they really do dominate the rare earth uh, revenue part of the, of the project. Other ones, lanthanum, cerium, volume. But right now, the, the price is so low that it's almost not worth uh, producing those. So we'll focus on the key revenue generators. I understand the current quarter, Ian, that you're going to be operating a pilot plant there. Is that to show that your flow charts actually do work? Uh, or is it also to demonstrate to your potential buyers uh, what your products will be? The, the, the pilot plant's really been operating now for coming up to nine years and really the length of that time has been to optimise, uh, to de-risk it and this current run is, is a culmination of all of that work over many, many years. So we think we've now de-risked the flow sheet to such an extent that it will work in a full-scale commercial plant. Um, we made some modifications and adjustments to the pilot plant for this run. But the other really big driver is to produce product. Um, we've got a number of products. We will produce all products this time, this time around. Get them out to the customers. Get the customers to look at them, decide whether this is what they would buy, uh, or if there are any issues. Um, we need to go back and sort of relook at what we need to do to produce that material that a customer wants to buy. So, as you're probably aware, when you're dealing in these sort of exotic metal suites. Uh, the customer drives the, the demand, the customer decides the purity, the particle morphology, all of these things which are very important when you start generating science. When you actually get into commercial production, you're not going to be doing the production. And I think you've got the beginnings, you've got an LOI in place uh, with a Vietnamese company. How important is that? Look, it's very important, Rick. Um, basically, we decided many years ago that uh, we would only produce a rare earth concentrate on site, and the reason for that is we were trying again, to, to minimise the risk of going into a commercial, technically complex uh, rare earth separation plant, knowing full well that we could produce the whole spectrum of rare earth. So we looked around for different opportunities and finally settled on, settled on uh, Vietnam rare earths in, in Vietnam. Uh, an interesting company um, run by a very entrepreneurial uh, gentleman and basically that plant's been operating since 2012. It can produce uh, all the rare earths, it can produce them to, to high specifications and it's already selling uh, product into Japan. Um, and also importantly they've now added on a, a rare earth metal plant. So we can take our rare earths, uh, if we produce oxides and then go through to produce the, the actual metal which is very important when you get into like the, like the magnet space and trying to, trying to get into uh, sales into that area. So a very important step forward for us um, and a very encouraging joint venture. And I have to add, um, I was very, I've been very impressed in, in Vietnam and the, over the last three or four years I've been going there, uh, just how enthusiastic and industrious the people are. Uh, they're quite amazing and they will really, they want to succeed uh, and they want to succeed against the the big, uh, big hairy neighbour, as they call them, to the north. Now, DZP's 
it's it's got all of its environmental permitting and you're 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 ready to go uh what are the next steps there really the step is, is financing and and really we've been working on that for probably three years as well so Getting financing for a billion dollar project, it takes a lot of time and effort, putting credibility in place, it's always credibility, and then ultimately offtake agreements. You have to have offtake agreements, or at least levels of, of offtake uh, certainty, that's going to make a financiers happy. So the big drive right now is to tidy up all the offtake arrangements, get genuine agreements in place, while we continue to work with our advisors on, on putting the finance together. So very important. Um, we see financing as being staged, perhaps over 12 months, 18 months, but the key step for us initially is to start work on ground, doing the infrastructure, uh, getting the roads in place, power and water supply in place, do the final steps of the detailed design. And we, we'd like to start that early in the new year if we can. You've been mining for 20 years in that part of Australia. You're pretty well established there. You know the rules and the routines. That must be helping. It is. It is. It's. It's a. It's an interesting exercise uh, when you do. When you, as you say, we've been there for a long time. Uh, even though processes and procedures and and conditions have changed dramatically during that twenty years, uh, they're making it tougher and tougher all the time. But having done all that and having just recently put the gold mine into production, we're now at least on talk, talking terms with the regulators. Uh, they know who we are. We know how, how they need the information presented and how they need to uh, for us to go forward. So yeah, and that and the local community. You know, we work very well with the local community and really the majority of people in our region are very keen for the project to proceed. We touched, you touched briefly on some of the lower commodity prices. Um, is that going to be a, a challenge when you go into production, if things stay uh, as they are? Yeah, uh, fortunately, no. I mean, all the financials that we've done since August last year when we completed the front in, front in engineering and design phase, the feed design, we used that stage current spot prices for all of our commodities and basically we've just rerun the numbers again recently and they're not, not vastly different to what they were in August last year. Uh, but fortunately, the project is very robust at current prices. You know, we don't need rare earth to double, for example, to, to make the project work. It works currently. And that's the other important thing about, uh, about Vietnam. I mean, their cost structure is so low that given our upfront costs that we have in the project and their cost to produce separated rare earths, we can actually compete with China. So we're not dependent upon a, a price rise in any of the commodities for the project to be su successful. Well, Ian, I should disclose that I have uh, an economic interest in some American depository receipts of Alkane Resources. <laughs> well, thank you, Fred. I'll take that as a vote of confidence. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Ian, very much. We look forward to seeing what happens next. Thanks, Fred. Appreciate that. Thank you.